Hey there and welcome back to the new video of Simplifying DevOps series by Cube Simplify. My name is Ayush Sharma and I'm a Cube Simplify ambassador. In today's video, we'll be discussing about essential Linux commands. Before jumping into the commands, let's discuss. Let's know why it's you know beneficial for us to learn Linux commands. So while preparing for the video, I came across this knowledgeable article on Cura, and I wanted to focus on these three paragraphs. That you know, if you are someone you know pursuing your career in DevOps, you definitely will uh, you know some other day have interaction or communication with servers. you might you know work on uh, various servers or you might have or you, you might deploy your own server as well so if you are someone uh, following this practice in real life it's advisable to have a uh, you know deep knowledge of linux commands as well because it's it's really easy if you are working with servers it's really easy for you to interact and communicate to them uh, using linux commands it's a pretty hard if you are interacting with servers if you are interacting it with the help of a gui it's it's a pretty complicated uh, task if but if you are talking about the linux thing it's comparatively easy the next thing is uh, the troubleshooting or the debugging part so uh, you know if you are a programmer you definitely uh, suffer from errors and you you need to debug the code it, it's helpful and it's it's you know easy if you are doing that using a linux command and also the programming thing as i already mentioned is uh, beneficial if you are uh, aware of some linux commands right so now we are aware of uh, why linux commands are beneficial for us now let's jump into some basic linux commands as well so the first and the, the most basic command is pwd command it tells you in which directory you are currently so i am in the supervised directory which is in the users directory right moving on to the next command is ls command which is used to list all the files or the uh, directories which is present in the current directory so as you can see the the list of the uh, files and directories the name in the blue uh part is the directories and the white part is uh, the files there are various arguments and flags as well so if you hit ls minus a or hyphen a whichever way you pronounce it and hit enter you can see there the, the list has uh, increased now so as you can see the dot file has been added in, in in this list so these are the hidden files which is there in the current directory and minus a or the hyphen a is a flag or an argument which is used to you know uh, give give a condition uh, to the command line to include the uh, hidden files as well while listing all the files you can google and have a deep dive on more commands or the more arguments as well there are various arguments if you are talking about a single command so if i hit ls minus ltr and you can see there are the list of the non hidden files and the directories are displayed here uh, it's also showing the dates it's showing the size uh, it's showing that in which directory these files are present also the permissions this file has read write permission we'll learn about more commands through which you, you will be able to change the permission as well of file or a directory this this was all about ls command now let's move ahead let's say if i want to switch between the directories and if i want to move to some another directory so the command which comes in handy is cd command which is used to change directory cd stands for change directory but i would prefer before typing the cd you should know in which directory you want to move in so just hit ls and these are the directories which are present there Uh, let's just move to the desktop directory so if i have to hit cd and then i have to type desktop i have to hit enter and now i am in the desktop directory how should i know that i am in the desktop directory hit pwd again and you will be able to know that you are in the desktop directory which is in the supervised directory and this which is in the root user directory right to move to the previous directory is cd and space two times dot and hit enter now you are moved to the previous directory uh, to confirm you can hit pwd again how sh how should one create a directory so mkdir is the command which is used uh, to create a directory let's say i am someone who is creating a directory named cube simplify i hit enter as you can see the file has been created here so i was in the desktop directory but i actually wanted to open the cube simplify directory so what i will do is i will move to the cube simplify directory right now i am in the cube simplify directory now i will hit open space dot i will hit enter and you can see the directory is being opened here in the graphical manner now we know how to create a directory so the next command is a little bit similar which is touch command it is used to create a file not a directory so if i you know if i just hit video dot txt and i hit enter and you can see a file is being created on the right side of uh, your screen in order to know more about the next command let me just create multiple directories here right so you see there are two directories being created already here now the next command is cp command which is used to copy a file from one directory to another directory 
right so if i hit cp and i hit the file name so video.txt is the file i want to copy let's say i want to copy into the docker directory i hit enter now i move to the docker directory and i just hit ls so you can see the file has been uh, copied into the docker directory also you can just you know check by opening it in the graphical face it's here it's already been created as you can see how easy it is uh, to move between the directories you know create multiple directories as well this is a benefit of uh, using a command line interface right so uh, now let's let's move on to the next command which is vi command so vi command is used to edit a file here itself in the command line interface you know you, you can maybe write something or edit something in a existing file as well so if i talk about video.txt i am in the docker directory uh, if i hit vi uh, and the file name that is video.txt and i hit enter and you can see i have uh, no, a separate window has appeared now if i hit i i will enter into the insert mode in, in which you will be able to edit the file now let's say hit the like uh, hit the like button for cube simplify now let's say i want to save this uh, file with this word already being written there so it's a text file now what i have to do is i have to hit enter to exit the insert mode i'll just have to hit a colon wq and hit enter so this is already being saved and edited uh, automatically by you know following this step now how to know uh, that the file has been edited so the next command is cat command which is used to display the thing which is being uh, which is being edited or which is there in the file so if i hit cat video dot txt and i hit enter as you can see this we just wrote this uh, there hit the like for gibson file right now moving on to the next command as we talked earlier that you know there are various permissions now let's uh, know about the permissions so to know about the permissions was uh, ls minus ltr was the command so if i hit this so there is a read write both permission being given to the file now let's say i want to change this permission so the, the next command is ch mode right it is used to change the permission for a file now it, let's say if i hit 400 and i hit the file name and i hit enter by the way if you hit the upper arrow it will take you to the previous command which you have entered so if i hit enter now you can see i only have the right permission here i had no write and uh, read both the permissions but here now i have the read permissions so the next command which comes in handy is the curl command so curl command is used to transfer data from and to the server let's say if you want to download any file from my website uh, just you know look for uh, the look for the curl link and then you can easily uh, download it into your local system so i have googled for uh, you know kubectl uh, file I, 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 i'll just copy and paste it here i hit enter yeah it's downloaded so you see the kubectl file here but it's not in the executable form so to convert into you uh, executable form we have already covered ch mode command uh, just hit ch mode space plus x space just you know uh, confirm or check once uh, whether the file is in the current directory or not so it's in the current directory i'll just hit enter and you can see it's converted into the executable form right so now you see a tar file as well here the helm tar file now to extract this file we use the keyword tar which is also very beneficial so tar minus xvf is the flag uh, no, uh, pardon me before that i have to copy the file name completely so i will hit ls enter here's the file i'll just copy it tar again hyphen xvf and the command and you can see the file has been extracted right the next command is env command which is used to check the environment variables if you hit enter you can see all the environment variables which are already being set being displayed here right so the next command is very basic command clear command which is used to clear uh, the window of the terminal or the command line right uh, now you might wonder that these all things are deleted that's not the case it's it's just uh, shifted upwards to you know create a space for you to write further commands right so the next command which comes in handy is du command which is used to see the disk uh, storage or the disk uh, utility if you hit du you see the size and the file name which are they are occupying in the memory right now this is not in the human readable form just hit du hyphen h which is used to convert into the human readable form now you can see it's in the mb cool so now let's move to the next command which is the ping command 
ping command is used to ping the servers to check the network connectivity of any server let's say i want to ping uh, google.com if i enter now you see it's it has started uh pinging the google server now let's say i want to exit from this if you are a mac user just hit control plus c it will exit from the mode which is uh, extracting the packets right so the next thing is let's say i want to only extract two or three packets not the list so i will just hit ping and the flag is minus or hyphen c i want to extract two packets google.com and you can see it has only given me the two packets net set command which is used to you know play the network statistics to monitor network connections if i hit net stat and i ping the google servers as you can see all these i have been returned to me you can also filter if you want only the limited amount of connections let's say tcp connections you can definitely have a deep dive into it right so let's move to the next command that is a ps command so if i hit ps and it is used to you know check the all the processes which are running so if you hit ps and hit enter you can see all these processes are uh, running if i am in the current directory if i hit ps minus ef it will show me all the processes running in your local system you can kill any of them if you want so the next command is the, the tail command and tail command is used to you know display last occurring words or the sentences in a file so if i hit tail i select the file name and if it enter as you can see all these things which were uh, in the last have been displayed now let's say i want to display a limited amount from the last occurring so if i hit tail hyphen n let's say i want to only display the five i select the file uh, only the last five have been displayed next command that comes is top command top command is used to check the memory and cpu utilization if i hit top and you can see all the details have been fetched and been displayed that was all in today's video thank you for tuning in uh, make sure to hit the like like button and also subscribe to the channel for more related content we are on a mission to simplify crowd native and devops we will be sharing some uh, resources for you in the description such as essential linux commands for devops it's written by our uh, cube simplify ambassador named bisar das you can always refer to cube simplify blogs just go to hashnode search cubeify and there are various blogs related to devops so you can definitely refer to these blogs and also the videos we are making thank you